In 2.1, we looked at qualitative data, that categorical data, those labels. Now we're going to start looking at quantitative data. Now to summarize quantitative data, we use a frequency distribution just like we did for qualitative data. However, since these data have no natural categories, we divide it into classes. We need to group the data. Classes are intervals of equal width that cover all values that are observed in the data set. The lower class limit of a class is the smallest value that it can appear in that class. The upper Good morning, the upper class limit. of a class is the largest value that can appear in a class. So here we have a class from zero to four. So the lower limit would be zero, upper limit four. Then the next group starts at five and goes to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. The class width is the difference between consecutive class limits. So zero to five the difference would be five so my class width is five ten to five ten to fifteen so forth it's five steps apart you could even look at the upper class limits four plus five is nine plus five is 14 plus five is 19. so a class width is the difference between those limits now when we're choosing classes we want to make sure ever every observation must fall into one of the classes the classes must not overlap and they must be of equal width. Now, note there must not be any gaps between the classes either. So as soon as I leave four, I'm going to five. As soon as I leave nine, I'm going to 10. And we don't want any gaps between classes, even if there are no observation in that class, it would have a frequency of zero. And that needs to be noted as well. So when we construct a frequency distribution, we're going to choose a class width first. We'll talk about how we do that. Now, once we choose a class width, we're going to choose a lower class limit for the first class. This should be a convenient number that is slightly less than the minimum data value. Then we compute the next lower limit by adding the class width and continuing on. And we keep repeating that. Then we can count the number of observations in each class to make our fre frequency distribution. So let's take this data. The emissions for 65 vehicles in units of grams of particles per gallon of fuel are given. And we're going to construct a frequency distribution using a class width of one. All right, so we need to start it lower than what we have, and we wanna make sure we do this pretty well. So if I look in the data, I have some that are like 0 0.86. So maybe we start our class at 0, 0.00. Then, class width of one, the next one would start at 1.00, and 5.00. And 
And we would even want to go, I noticed a value at 6.55, so I need to go all the way up to 6.00. Now, let's think about where this class would end. It needs to end right before 1.00. So this would be at 0 0.99. Then this would be ending at 1.99, 2.99. 3.99 and 4.99, 5.99 and 6.99. Now we want to find our frequencies. So I'm going to kind of speed this along and let you take a moment and go through and fill in your frequency distribution. So if you didn't already pause the video, count them up just to make sure we can put them in the right distribution. When you're done, you should have a frequency chart that looks something like this. So we have nine here, 26 here, 11, 13, three, one, and two. Now to visualize this, we could make a bar chart and we would have our frequencies along the vertical and our classes along the horizontal. So we would have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six and i'm going to put a mark at seven because we're going up to 6.99 let's make that five ten fifteen twenty twenty five so the first group is at nine so it'd be nine tall and one wide 26 tall and one wide. So our class width was one wide. 11, 13 would be about in the middle there. It's better on, on graph paper. Three, one, and then this one is two. So we can see our nice histogram, we can see which one is the, the most frequent. Um, we can see that the, most of our values are in this range. And we have very few over here in the upper range. Now we can also, I'll look at that. I'd already made a place for it. Let's copy that chart over to there. So this was our frequency bar graph. And then this one up to 26. And then two to three was 11. So a little bit higher. And then 13. And three. And then one. And then two. Perfect. Now, we can also do a relative frequency chart. So let's remember how we find the relative frequency. We take the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies. So we had 9, 26, 11, 13, 3, 1, and 2. And if we add those all up, We get 65. 
So to find our relative frequency, I'm going to take each of these and divide by 65. So these are called histograms instead of a bar graph. A bar graph is used with qualitative data, really, and a histogram is quantitative data. So when we're putting our quantitative data in, we make, make a histogram. We make rectangles. The height is the frequency, the width is the class width, and notice that these are touching because we have no gaps between our classes. Now we had already made a histogram for the frequency, so it's pretty easy. But now let's do the relative frequencies. So 0.138, that would be about here. And then the next one was 0.4. Then the next one was 0.169. And then point two, then four to five was point zero four six, about halfway there. Point zero one five, that's really low. Then point zero three one, that's about twice as big. And what do you notice about the two graphs? Well, we really have the same shape. We can still see the same like height. It's just our scale is different. Now, sometimes we need to decide how many classes we need to make. And there are no hard or and fast rules for choosing the number of classes. In general, it is good to have more classes rather than few, but it is also good to have reasonably large frequencies in some of the classes. Um, so there's a couple of principles here. Too few classes produce a histogram lacking in detail. Like if you only have four classes, you don't see much detail. Now, if we have too many classes, we have too much detail and we really can't tell what's going on. I mean, look at this one. This is way too many classes. Now, I also want to show you how you can make a histogram using technology. And I'll show two ways. Main way we're going to do in class is 